Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Eco Hitch Trailer Hitch Receiver on a 2022 Subaru Forester. Now this is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed and one of the first things you may notice or may not notice is going to be the fact that this is a hidden cross tube so the only thing that's going to be visible is the actual receiver and the safety chain loops giving it a really nice clean look but still getting that usability of the hitch. This is also a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening and that's going to be a huge great option for a lot of different accessories. This is the most common one, so finding a bike rack, cargo carrier, or even a ball mount for your hitch is gonna be nice and easy because this is pretty common. You're also gonna have a 5 8 hitch pin hole, and that's so you can actually keep your accessories in place. Now the hitch doesn't come with the pin and clip. A lot of times your accessories will have them with them, but if you do need to pick one up or you wanna pick up a locking one to keep your accessories locked in place, we have plenty of options available here at eTrailer. You're also gonna have a plate style safety chain loop here and they're quite large to be able to fit your standard size hooks or even a larger clevis style is gonna be no problem for when hooking up to your trailer. Now speaking of trailer, you're probably wondering what this is capable of towing and it's a decent amount at 3,500 pounds for your gross trailer weight rating and that's gonna be the weight of the accessories plus the trailer loaded up and that's going to be a decent amount to pull a reasonably sized trailer. You also have a tongue weight rating of 525 pounds, and that's gonna be the downward pressure that's put on the receiver tube opening. So some of your suspended accessories, that's kind of what you're looking at as far as that weight capacity goes. Now this cannot be used with weight distribution, so you're limited to those numbers. And I do recommend before towing a trailer, checking your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle's capable of towing before actually hooking up. You're gonna to wanna to compare that with the numbers of the hitch and take the lower of the two just to stay safe. And you can see it's pretty well flush, giving it a nice clean look. But when picking accessories that fold up, you're gonna to want to see from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia. And on this vehicle, it's about three and a half. So that's important to note because as you put some of those in and you fold up, you wanna make sure it doesn't make contact with the rear fascia, scuffing it up, or just making sure you have clearance. And I think with this, you should, shouldn't have too many problems with most accessories. Now, as far as your ground clearance goes, from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, we're looking at about 15 and a half inches. So pretty good ground clearance. I don't worry about the hitch making contact, but some of your suspended accessories like your car carriers or bike racks, they actually extend past the vehicle. So when you go up and incline, those will tilt closer to the ground. Um, but again, this is a pretty good ground clearance. I don't worry too much, but it is something to keep in mind when you are going up inclines or maybe on some rough terrain. Now, as far as the installation goes, this is a little bit more in depth than some of the other standard hitches that may be available for this. And it does require pulling off the rear fascia. And although that may seem pretty scary or daunting, it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy to do. But I do recommend having someone handy that can help you not only get the hitch in place, but also take off your fascia. So I'm gonna walk you through every single one of those steps, and that way you can get your hitch installed. So let's take a look at that now. For this installation, we are actually gonna be taking off the rear fascia of the vehicle to get the hitch in place. And that's kind of the nature of a lot of the eco hitches. And it's not gonna to be too terrible as long as we move step by step. And our first step is going to be opening up our hatch. And we're gonna reveal two plastic pins that we're gonna to need to remove. Now these have a Phillips head screw in the center section. Sometimes these can be a little bit tricky. So putting a little bit of pressure around the outside ring to keep it from spinning, it's gonna allow that to kind of pop up. And once that's popped up, you're able to get a nail um, or a flat head under there. Or I'm using a trim panel tool here. These are really helpful for these plastic push pins. Uh, and we can just simply pull this out. Now we're gonna to wanna to hold on to all of our hardware. It's gonna make installation later on a lot easier. So. We're gonna have two on this side and two on the other. So make sure all the steps, I'll make sure to re repeat on the other side if it does need to be done over there. But this is going to allow us to pull this plastic cover off. Now, you might have to kind of pry at it a little bit here because it is kind of popped into the tail light. And kind of in this section here, we might be able to pry this out. And these generally have some plastic clips that just kind of keep them retained in place. But you can see I'm gonna just work my way down here and we should get this popped out. There we go. 
So now we're gonna need to remove our tail light. And first thing we're gonna do is unclip it from the wire harness. So I'm gonna just push on this tab and this should separate just like that. And now we're gonna have two Phillips, uh, it looks like a 10 millimeter, let's check real quick. It is, so either a 10 millimeter socket or a Phillips should be able to get these out. And now we're gonna kind of just wiggle that back and forth and that's gonna pop this clip out. You'll see that kind of pops in and these slide in. So if it is fighting you, just kind of wiggle it, kind of loosen it up and giving it backward pressure should allow us to pop that off. So we'll go ahead and do the same on the other side. So now we're gonna to come to each wheel arch on the back portion by the rear fascia and we're gonna to want to find the plastic clips that go along here. Now this is a touring model so it doesn't have the mud flaps. If you have mud flaps you probably do have some mounting points here that you're also gonna to need to take out. But it looks like we have this plastic push pin here. This one's a slightly different style. Um, you're gonna push in the center portion just like that and then this outer ring to get that to pop out, you can kind of just peel on the plastic and that's gonna leave that to be able to pull out a little bit easier. Um, so with this, I can see that I can already start to pop the rear fascia off. So it looks like that's our only uh, points of secure, uh, securing on the wheel well. But again, if you do have the mud flap, you're gonna wanna remove that as well. So we'll go ahead, hop on the other side, pop that out. So now you're gonna wanna hop under your rear fascia and you're gonna see some plastic push pins along here. And this is just attaching our fascia again to the bottom portion of where the securing mounting points are on the frame. So we're gonna to wanna to pop these out and these are a slightly different style. Then you're gonna see that there's uh, slots here that's gonna allow us to put a flathead in there and any of those and just kind of, once you get that flathead in there, a lot of times I'll just do a twisting motion and that'll pop that enough to get the rest of it out. So we'll go ahead and just work your way on this outer edge and any of those plastic push pins you're gonna to wanna to take out. So we're getting ready to pull the rear fascia off and this is a good time. You might wanna grab an extra set of hands and set a, a spot aside to actually put the fascia to rest on so it doesn't get scratched. But going along with that, I'm also gonna run some painter's tape along the seams here. This is gonna make it to where these edges aren't gonna rub against each other, or if they do, they're at least gonna have protection from the painter's tape, and that way you're not scuffing or nicking your paint. So this is a nice, easy step to do. Um, that's gonna save, again, any damage from occurring, or at least help prevent it on your vehicle while putting this up. A lot of times your clips can kind of rub against the paint and then scratch it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these on the seams here follow this along and then uh, do it on the other side and then we can get this pulled off. Now, something you're gonna want to check, I do believe we're gonna have a clip here on the driver's side that we're gonna have to separate. So during this process, just make sure you're not pulling too terribly hard and just walking away with the bumper. You don't wanna damage the uh, wiring harness. So as we kind of work our way towards the middle here, this is our wiring here. I'm just gonna go ahead and separate that. There's a little push tab here and now, we can set our rear fascia somewhere safe. So now we're gonna to want to remove our impact bar and the way we're gonna do that is there is going to be a bolt and then a nut here. And this is gonna be a 14 millimeter socket for both of them. So you can actually run this through with an extension and we'll go ahead and get this removed. It might be a little tight. Woo. So it is gonna fight you a little bit there, but now once broke loose, I can go ahead and get these taken out. Now there's also gonna be bolt under here, so each side will have two bolts and one nut. So we'll go ahead and get these all removed and then pull our impact bar off. Now for our next step, we're gonna be lowering the muffler down and that's gonna gain us access to the heat shield and also be able to bolt the hitch up. So lowering this down is not too terribly hard to do. There's gonna be some exhaust isolators, but before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to support this. Now, if you're doing this on the ground, uh, in your driveway or in your garage or whatever it may be, you can use a block of wood or something just to support the exhaust from really just holding itself up. That can cause damage downstream. So I'm gonna be using a cam buckle strap here and I'm just gonna cradle our exhaust, you know, just mounting it kind of to secure points. And I'll just cinch this up 
And that way when we lower this down, there's gonna be something at least holding that weight so it's not just fully suspended. Now, as far as getting the exhaust isolators off, they're not too terribly hard to get on these. We have one here. There's also gonna be one on the back side here. And then there's gonna be one up here. I'm not sure if we have to remove this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. It's gonna just give us a little bit more room to work with. Now, sometimes these rubber isolators can get a little bit tricky and they might not wanna slide around. So using a penetrating oil or even a soapy water solution, is gonna help lubricate this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, spray these down and I'll get my pry bar so we can get these off. Now using either a long screwdriver or pry bar, it should be pretty easy to use the loop here on the muffler as leverage to kind of get this off. And these isolators are pretty strong. So if it does seem like you're putting a lot of pressure and it's kind of moving and uh, contorting around, that's okay. These are pretty easy to uh, be flexible here. So using this top one, I'm gonna try to loop it in there and it doesn't matter if you get the top or the bottom one off as long as we get the isolator separated that's our main goal here so using that top hanger here i'm able to kind of just wedge this back and if at this point i could probably use my hands to just pop off the rest so now i'll get this back one here so now with the muffler drop down, you can see we're gonna have a, enough room to get up here. Um, you're gonna wanna use a 10 millimeter socket and either a ratchet, I have this 90 degree uh, impact here, but we'll get these taken down. And there's gonna be a total of, looks to be four of these. So make sure you get all those removed. And then we're gonna take the heat shield down and uh, we're gonna save that for later. We may be doing some trimming for, on that. So now you can grab your hitch and we're gonna be sliding this into the slots here. And we're gonna place the hole there where that stud is and make sure it slides over. And then to hold this in place, you're gonna go to your hardware that's supplied in the kit and you'll see a split washer and a flat washer, so make sure you have it in this orientation. And uh, I'm gonna just go ahead right now and just get these hand threaded in. And that's gonna, the stud's gonna hold the hitch up, but this is gonna make sure that it's not gonna fall down while we get the rest of our hardware in. So you can go ahead and do the same on the other side. So now that we have our bolts in place, we're gonna go ahead and on the stud, we're gonna put a flat washer, a split washer, and then this nut here. And now if you need to gain a little bit more threads to get it started, you can kind of just push the hitch, hitch back and uh, that should cinch it up a little bit more or even tightening these bolts is a good way to do it as well. Um, but we'll go ahead and get this started here. And then just make sure the other side has all the same hardware on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of tighten these up. Um, I'm not gonna really crank them down because we're gonna go back later with a torque wrench to make sure they're properly torqued down, but this is gonna help cinch this up and kind of get it into place. Now there is a little bit of side to side lateral movement. It's very little, but it's a good chance to make sure that this is perfectly aligned. So just do a quick visual check before tightening. So now we're going to grab our fish wire here as well as our bolt, our star washer and a flat washer. And what we're gonna do is take this second one towards the front, this little rubber plug here, we're gonna just pop that out. And then we're gonna take this coiled end and we are going to feed this back. And this should go to the outside of the frame and we have that little access hole, so we're gonna kind of fish it through there. So you might have to get your fingers in there to find that coiled end. But once you do, you can pull that through and uh, leaving a little bit of the wire on the other side there. So don't completely pull it through. But then we're gonna take our flat washer here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of feed that in there. Same now with the star washer. And then this coiled end, we're gonna take our bolt and then just thread that on there. And we can feed the bolt in there as well. And then just kind of jostle this along and we should be able to get them to all kind of align here to where we'll have that bolt come through, giving us a stud to mount our hitch. 
Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to take this fish wire and uh, holding the bolt, you're gonna to wanna to uncoil it so we can use this on the other side. So just lightly untwist it here. And we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same process on the other side. Now when you were feeding this through, you might have noticed part of that hitch there. And what this bolt is doing, it actually feeds in uh, through the hitch and this is gonna secure it to the frame rail further up. So just an added point of security. So to ensure that it's in place and holding tight, we'll put our plate washer there. And then we're gonna follow it up with a split washer. And then we'll take our nut here and just kind of get that started. And then we can go ahead and do the same on the other side. Now this can be a little bit tricky uh, because that bolt's gonna want to spin. So what I do is actually pull down and that's gonna put the head of the bolt against that star washer, allowing you to get this cinched up. Now, once you have it nice and in place, we're gonna go back with our torque wrench. Now, this hardware, the larger hardware, is gonna have a different torque setting than the other hardware that we fed up um, on our studs and on that cross member where we mounted up the hitch. So just make sure you're using the instruction manual to make sure that you have the proper settings on the different hardware. Now, if you need a torque wrench, we actually have them available here at E-Trailer. And this is gonna be important because it's gonna make sure that it's gonna be tight enough to hold the hitch in place, but also not too tight to put stress on the studs. So let's go through and we'll get everything torqued down. Now I've gone ahead and taped out where we're gonna be trimming on our fascia, and this is just gonna give us that clearance for the hitch to fit in here. And I just use the instruction manual, and this will probably get us pretty close. Now sometimes once you actually get the uh, fascia back on, you might have to do some minor trimming, but uh, this again, this will get us pretty close to where we need to be. And as far as cutting, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. If you have a rotary tool um, or a power cutting tool, just be careful, this is plastic, so it's pretty easy to go through. You don't wanna overcut. But another good way is just using a pair of shears here. I'm able to cut through this pretty quickly and easily. So I'm gonna get this trimmed out. And then right after this, we'll actually be trimming out our heat shield as well to make clearance for the bolt that's under there. So this is what it looks like trimmed out. And you can see that it's nice and clean with the edges being deburred. I just used a knife blade and kind of run it backwards on it. And that should get any, uh, if you do have any flashing here, it'll clean that up. Uh, so this should be pretty close to where we need to be. Once we get this up, if we need to, we can trim a little bit more, but I think we're good for now. So moving on to our heat shield, we're also gonna need to trim out this rectangular area here, and that's where our bolt has fed through, so we need to make access for that. So just using my shears, I'm gonna just go ahead and this raised portion, pretty much this area, we're gonna just follow these lines and get this cut out. Now do be careful as this can get pretty sharp here. So I recommend if you are handling it to wear some gloves. So now at this point, all that's left to do is put everything back in in the reverse order that we took them off. Now, when you do put your fascia up, it is important. You're gonna wanna get these center snaps in. So again, it is the reverse way and then just work your way towards the edges, just being careful not to scratch the paint. And if you do have that painter's tape, that's gonna help a lot. But I'm gonna go ahead and we'll get this put all back together. So with our fascia back in place, all of our plastic push pins put back in and our taillights back in, we're officially ready to use our hitch. Now something I will remind you to do is make sure you pl plug that back in, that plug that we separated when taking the fascia off. Otherwise you're gonna have, probably have to take the fascia off again. So make sure you're doing all those steps. And then other than that, you're ready to hook up to your bike rack, cargo carrier trailer, and start using your hitch.